guests and interact with uh, other people in their homes is we end up with items that we have in our house uh, sometimes that we know whose it is but it's a person who maybe came one time and will never come back again and we don't really have a way to find them or to be in touch with them uh, or sometimes we don't know whose it is it's not marked and there were a lot of people that came and went and you know we've asked a few people you know is this yours or not? And nobody seems to know. And now we're stuck with this item in our house. Uh, so what's the halacha of this item? What do we do with it? What what are we allowed to do with it? And uh, what do we have to do? So the halacha is as follows. Uh, there's a halacha of hashavas aveda, that we have a requirement, if it's an item that probably belongs to a Jew, so we have a requirement to find that Jew and track them down and return the item to them. And because of that requirement, uh, the item is not ours. It never really becomes ours. Uh, even if the person who left it there uh, forgot and they go away, and even if you know they remember that they left it there, they completely give up hope on it. Let's say you find a, a ring, uh, you know, and it's uh, you know somewhat expensive and nice, uh, and there's just no way to know. You had a whole big shabbaton of uh, women and girls in your home, and there's just no way to know. Uh, whose it is, and you've asked, and you've posted onto the chats and onto the groups, and it's been already, uh, you know, a year, and nobody's come to claim this ring. Um, so, uh, and let's say the real owner of the ring is out there somewhere, and let's say the real you know, she just didn't see it on the chat, and she missed it, and after, you know, several months or a year, or a few years, she gives up hope. She, she thought she lost it somewhere else, and she went and looked there and asked, and, you know, she's never going to put it together in her mind that she left it at your house, and this person gives up hope on that ring. The problem is, since the ring was in your possession from the time that the person was still hoping to find it, uh, it, it doesn't become a Hefker Aveda in your hands. As opposed to if you find something out on the street, let's say you find something on the street that has no marking on it, there's no way for us to figure out whose it is and who it belongs to. Uh, so something like that becomes Hefker because we can assume that the person you know knows that they lost it, and if they lost it, they have no way of knowing that they're ever going to get it again. Uh, so something that we find in the street, you should always ask a shayla, uh, but very often something, if there's no way to figure out whose it is, uh, that's something that we are allowed to keep. However, if it was in our home, uh, so then it, it didn't start out as something that was hefker. It started out as something that belonged to somebody. And even though they gave up hope on it, it never changes its status. And therefore, it never really changes from the status of an Aveda. And that would mean that you're really never allowed to throw it out or use it uh, or sell it or, you know, or do anything like that. Uh, however, this being a somewhat difficult situation sometimes that we find ourselves in, that we have some things and now we're just taking up room in our closet, that we have this coat that somebody left and, and you know, we can't do anything with it or uh, towels or sheets or, you know, whatever it is. So what the post can say as a as a remedy for this one, what could do is as follows. Uh, make a note to yourselves. So nowadays we could leave an email or make a Google document or something, you know, some sort of a permanent note. Make a note to yourself that says, look, on such and such a date, uh, this item, and now you could take a picture of it even, and say, you know, uh, which had been in my home already now for X amount of time, it doesn't matter, you don't have to be exact, you could know, say this item has been in my home for a long time, um, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to take it now and either throw it out or keep it, use it, sell it, do what I'm going to do with it, but I'm committing that when Mashiach comes, and Mashiach, Eliyahu Anavi comes, and he's going to return all of the lost items to the people that Zohazal tell us is going to happen, so that I'm committing that if the person demands the fair market value of the item uh, at this time, at the time that I'm sort of taking, so then I'm, I'm going to commit to giving that person the money. Um, so what that means is, let's say there's a nice sweater in your house, and, uh, you know, you, you would wear it, or one of your kids would wear it. It's, you know, a nice sweater. There's no reason to, you know, throw it out. So then, um, you know, after whatever amount of time, a year or a year and a half, a time that you're convinced that you're really not going to find that the person who it is is going to ever come back. So you make a note, take a picture, say this sweater on such and such a date, um, you know, and if one day uh, Hannah Schwartz says, oh, no, that's my sweater, that's my sweater. Thank you so much for finding it. Uh, I want it back. And you say, oh, you know, well, we lost it. It's, or it's got, you know, torn and we threw it out, but we're willing to pay you, you know, what the cost of a used sweater is, uh, which is going to be very, very small. And that way you could take uh, ownership of those items. Again, that's not something you could do right up front at the beginning, uh, but after something has been there for a while, uh, over a year for sure, and you've made repeated attempts and you can't figure out a way to return it, so then you're allowed to sort of appropriate it as long as you are committing to paying back what its value is, should the person demand it.